Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, welcome to Old Donation Episcopal Church for this Sunday morning. It is a real blessing to see all of you, and we'll see who comes in at 1030 um, <laughs> as well. But uh, it's wonderful to see all of you here uh, bright and on time for 10 o'clock service. Uh, we'll try to do this every Sunday now. This is good. So at 10 for the rest of the summer, right? So very, very good. Um, we will have uh, a celebration of the Holy Eucharist, but before we do, please stand up and introduce yourself to someone you don't know. And now we will have a moment of silence, and we will begin with, we know that Christ is raised. Please stand. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Together let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. During the singing of the hymn of praise,
the crucifer will lead the young children out for children's chapel. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Keep, O Lord, your household, the church, in your steadfast faith and love, that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion for the sake of our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of Scripture. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Samuel went to Ramah, and Saul went up to his house in Gibeah of Saul. Samuel did not see Saul again until the day of his death, but Samuel grieved over Saul. And the Lord was sorry that he had made Saul king over Israel. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do, and you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded, and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling, and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves, and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons, and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. 
Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. The word of the Lord. The psalm for today is Psalm 20. We will read it responsively by half verse. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. Send you help from his holy place. Remember all your offerings. Grant you your heart's desire. We will shout for joy at your victory and triumph in the name of our God. Now I know that the Lord gives victory to his anointed. Some put their trust in chariots and some in horses. They collapse and fall down. O Lord, give victory to the king. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. We are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense for what they have done in the body, whether good or evil. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we try to persuade others, but we ourselves are well known to God, and I hope that we are also well known to your consequences. We are not commending, <clears throat> excuse me, we are not commending ourselves to do you again, but giving you an opportunity to boast about us so that you may be able to answer those who boast in outward appearance and not in heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. We are in our right mind. It is for you. For the love of Christ urges us on because we are convinced that one has died for all. Therefore, we have all died. And he died for all so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view. We know him no longer in, in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is new creation. Everything old has passed away. See everything. It has become new. The word of the Lord. Please stand and we will sing hymn 209, We Walk by Faith.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. Jesus also said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth, yet when it is sown... It grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the loving, life-giving, and liberating God who is Blessed Trinity. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. It's on. So one thing I am working on to prepare myself as a parent is the openness to tell Julian I'm sorry when he's able to understand it. Because I know that I will eventually yell at him. (laughs) Taking care of another person who has a will entirely separate from your own is hard stuff. And I want to model for him that it is okay to admit your mistakes and how to apologize well and repair the breach to restore that relationship. These are habits that don't always come easy to us as humans. We automatically want to protect our vulnerabilities and blame instead of apologizing. But I think reconciliation is at the heart of what it means to be Christian. So it's important to me to practice what I quite literally preach. It's nothing new to note that the gospel, the good news of God, invites us into reconciliation, a posture of admitting our mistakes, accepting and extending forgiveness, and working to relate to each other better. It is the heart of our life together as Christians. What may be new is hearing that God also says, I'm sorry. There was a line in our reading from 1 Samuel this morning that you may have skipped over in your mind. And the Lord was sorry that he made Saul king over Israel. We're used to explaining these little comments away anytime we encounter them in the Old Testament. After all, isn't God omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent? What kind of thing is God saying he's sorry about? The Bible does give us a transcendent image of God, the God who is all-knowing, all-present, all-powerful. We hear about that God from the very first words of the Bible, the God who speaks and forms the earth with a word. But it is no accident that there are two creation stories at the beginning of the Bible. The one in which God speaks and it is done, and the one in which God gets down in the mud, plants a garden, forms people out of clay, and then works side by side with them to make sure that they can have meaningful relationships with each other. 
this picture of God is the opposite of the transcendent God we often default to. This God is imminent, kneeling down to our level to interact with us meaningfully, not unlike a parent with a child. And God was sorry that God made Saul king over Israel. Now, there is a certain amount of anthropomorphization, which is making God seem human in order to be understood in this verse. But I also think there is some mystery at work here that in some way, beyond our knowing, God can be sorry, God can grieve, and then take steps to make things right. God decides to work on our level to partner with us in order to help us make right our own relationship. God shows us how to take responsibility. After the note that God was sorry, God immediately asks Samuel a question. How long will you grieve over Saul? It's easy to hear this as an accusation. The time for grieving has passed. Get over it. I don't know about you, but I hate hearing words like that. They are words that invalidate the emotions we feel, that tell us to move on. I would guess that is what most of us hear, because we're used to hearing messages like that. But I don't think it's the gospel. And I don't think that's God. God cares for God's people, and God comforts us in our troubles. Tone of voice is everything. But the Bible is entirely written, so we never hear God's tone of voice. But if we don't supply the tone that we're used to hearing in our heads, what we have here instead is a God who is sorry for how things have turned out, who takes responsibility and rejects the current king in order to lay out a new direction. All of that is quite messy and complicated. And I have to admit that I have a soft spot in my heart for Saul, just like I do for Judas. Because Saul gets the short end of the stick more often than not. And because there is human interpretation overlaying God's actions, as there is throughout the Bible, Saul's suffering is often attributed to God and seen as a consequence of Saul not being the right king for Israel. It's laid out as Saul's fault. And I don't think that's true either. When I was a kid, there was a general understanding that I absorbed in the church that God places a calling on each of our lives. That calling, whatever it is, I was told, is singular. You either rise to meet it or you fail. Or maybe you didn't hear it right in the first place. We think God can't be sorry because God should have known that Saul would fail. God can't take real responsibility because God set this situation up to begin with. But that negates the partnership into which God invites us. And it negates any growth that any one of us is capable of. I felt a calling to be a missionary when I was 16. And I stand here before you today, not a missionary. Many Christians, some of whom I grew up with, might say that I have failed in my calling or I didn't hear it quite right. Obviously, I heard wrong. My real calling was to be a priest. But I don't think any of us have a single path in our life that we have to walk. God's light shines everywhere. And I can choose to grow and bring reconciliation on any path that I walk. Saul might have arisen to the occasion. And even after Saul could no longer be king, 
he might have brought good in other places. That is the beauty of God. There is always another chance because God's kingdom is one in which we all live together in love. That is why reconciliation is such an important part of our Christian life. But it does also involve sometimes setting aside things or people who will not move us forward. Saul needed to be set aside for the sake of Israel. That doesn't mean that he wasn't still a part of the fabric of the relationship that God was weaving out of all people. But it did mean he could no longer be king. There are ways in which the church writ large has actively worked against God's dream of becoming beloved community. And those things need to be set aside. That often requires us to elevate the ones whose voices who have been discounted. People of color, women, LGBTQIA plus people. Voices who we haven't heard in a long time. Those who in the past, like David, his father's last son, were left in the field tending the sheep because we couldn't imagine that we would need to hear that voice as leader. God cuts through our expectations and leads us into something new. This is a path that God is already drawing us on here at Old Donation, one we need to continue to follow the leading of the Spirit, our eyes open to anything that needs to be healed. And this is why it matters that I take time to practice reconciliation with my son, and with every person I meet in my day-in-day -day life. Our personal habits feed our communal actions for God to lead us into the perfect community of the kingdom of God. We need to allow ourselves to be changed, to be molded into the body of Christ. And that starts in the little steps we take each day so where might God be calling you to practice reconciliation in your own life so that as we come together as a church, we move forward together into that reconciliation of the kingdom of God? Amen. Amen. Please stand and we will affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, born of the Virgin of all mercies, you promise to hear when we pray in the name of your Son. Listen as we lift our voices in confidence and trust. Your intercessions 
may be led individually and randomly by the Spirit. We pray for the leaders of the church, especially Justice of the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Susan, our bishop, our clergy, Bob, Lizzie, Fred, Kipper, and Rick, and for all members of the church, enliven us for your mission. That we may be salt of the earth and light of the world. We embrace the world, creator of all. Lead us and all people to be living in justice and peace. That we may work for freedom, truth, and end to oppression. We pray for those who are with us, for our actions that multiply our participation in systems which benefit some, yet leave others lacking. especially for Patricia and Carol, Bonnie, Jim, Tom, Seal, Harriet, Maggie, Kathy, Ann, Dick, Charlie, Barbara, Holly, Dave, Beck, Tony, Pam, Peter, Elizabeth, Jeff, Steve, Denise, Henry, Rick, Linda, Kim, J.N., Bread, Bridge, Alexandra, Jennifer, Bill, Ben, Edith, Chris, Rose, Frank, Rebecca, John, Kathy, Todd, and Ken. In the silence, let us remember our own faults and failings. In the community of Christ Church and in the presence of all God's people, I confess to God that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, things done and left undone. I have not loved God or God's people and creation fully. I own my responsibility, commit to follow God's path, and pray for God's pardon. May God forgive you, Christ befriend you, the Spirit renew you and change your life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
So again, a uh, warm welcome to all of you, and it is a uh, real blessing to get our uh, combined services for the summer started today. This is wonderful. Uh, just a couple announcements about things going on. There is not a Wednesday night program this week. Uh, next Sunday, though, is a really important Sunday. Uh, we are uh, both having our regular liturgy, but we are also celebrating and remembering Juneteenth which we've done for a number of years here. And we will have a guest speaker uh, who will teach a class. Uh, Dr. Stephanie Richmond is a professor at Norfolk State. And she will be here with us at 9 o'clock in the morning in Tucker Hall to do a class based on the research that she and another professor have been doing, which uh, they have entitled Sold Down the River, which uh, has done research in the slave market that uh, happened in, uh, in Norfolk, taking people who were enslaved in Princess Anne County and Norfolk County uh, who were no longer um, being used and selling them down the river to New Orleans uh, where they could be resold into the Texas and Louisiana markets. Um, it's really interesting work, and it applies especially to our own area. And so it's, uh, it's a really interesting uh, program. She will also, with me, uh, talk a little bit during the service in the sermon time about the value of our own work with Norfolk State and how the support that we've been giving them over the years in establishing a scholarship for a student at Norfolk State is so valuable to the work that they're doing. And so Dr. Stephanie Richmond and I will be uh, kind of tag teaming the sermon time. So, so come and, and join us for that. In the evening, when we have the five o'clock service, we're gonna move the five o'clock service in here and it will change its, its nature. And I invite you to come back because we're going to have the I. Sherman Green Chorale, which is uh, 50 years plus in the making, uh, an African-American chorale that, that will be singing uh, some traditional uh, spiritual music and other pieces uh, that you will love, joined by a number of members of our St. Cecilia Choir and the Gathering Band. And together they will produce a concert with uh, part of that being a prayer and praise service. So instead of our normal five o'clock service, we'll change it to be a concert surrounded by prayers, okay? So come and join with us because the choir is fabulous and, uh, and you will be blessed. So in the morning, Juneteenth, in the evening, the I. Sherman Green Chorale, um, it'll be a day you don't want to miss, okay? Very good. Um, other than that, um, I'm not sure if there are things other than VBS we probably ought to call attention to, and I see... I can help. Jen is out there. <laughs> oh, and, uh, and Liz yes. is here. So we are getting ready for VBS. Uh, we have almost all the volunteers we need. <clears throat> so what we need still are volunteers to lead the small groups. Um, so you walk with the small, <clears throat> walk with the kids throughout the day. Uh, just get to know them. Sorry. And it's easy. <laughs> it is easy. Because um, as you go to each station, there are already adults there doing that station. So you're just shepherding the kids. Uh, you can also come and work in our nursery. And that uh, supports all of our volunteers. Anybody who has a kid who is not old enough to be in VBS is in the nursery. So it's not a ton of kids. Uh, but it's just the ones that belong to our volunteers. So talk to Jen. Um, and she can get you signed up and we will get everybody plugged in. We also need lots of youth. So if you still have youth that are looking for things to do, let us know and we will get them plugged into the various places. Okay, good, good. Any other announcements that I'm forgetting? Oh, the mosaic, oh, duh, <laughs> duh, duh. Last night we had the unveiling of sorts of the mosaic and I, and I trust that most of you went by it this morning on your way into worship. If you haven't gone out there, you'd have to go see it. It is unbelievable. It is just beautiful. And it makes the room a whole different room. So um, it really says this is church. And it says what this church is about. 
So uh, go in and look at it, and sometime we'll have a little uh, session and talk a little bit about the symbolism and all the different pieces. Um, it's, it's just unbelievable to me. So walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. And when it comes time for communion, there will be one communion station here, uh, two chalices that are for uh, sipping, two chalices that are for intinction, and uh, we'll have a separate communion station over on the side with uh, bread and two chalices as well. Okay, walk in love. prayer continues in your bulletin. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God.
gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us be pleased. Alleluia! The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts with faith and thanksgiving.
please stand as you are able for our post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Make no peace with oppression. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all persons. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us sing our closing song. I dismiss you one other announcement tomorrow the youth middle schoolers and high schoolers are going for a beach outing uh, leaving here about 9 45 so uh, 
If you want to go on that and you haven't told us yet, Bethany is right back there and she's happy to take more reservations. So we make sure we get enough seats on the bus, okay? Here tomorrow, beach outing, youth. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you.